serving Virginia, Maryland, and the district. This is 9 News at 11 p.m. The state of 1974. And a the Maryland Terrapins tonight sit at the top of college basketball. The Terps defeated a tough and determined Indiana team for Maryland's first ever national title. It's also the first title for Gary Williams after some 23 years of coaching. And that, of course, means celebration at College Park, the Terps' hometown. This is a live picture, a helicopter shot of Route 1 students. Thousands of students there have gathered to celebrate. It looks like things are under control from this angle, although we're told that there was a bonfire built there earlier, but nothing out of control. And now I believe you're looking at Fraternity Row on the campus. Uh, you can see there is a bonfire there, and things are very much under control. Uh, students mingling about. And I've got a feeling they're going to be there for most of the night. This is indeed an historic night. The Maryland Terps reign as national champs. Good evening, everybody. I'm Gervier Denson. And I'm Bruce Johnson in for Gordon Peterson tonight. Any moment now, the Maryland Terps are going to take to the podium and talk about tonight's game, and we'll bring you that press conference live. We're going to begin with our live team coverage of the Terps ride in Atlanta, 660 miles away and 15 hours away to College Park. Let's go first to Jess Atkinson and Virg Jacques, who are both in Atlanta. It's been a long time coming for the Maryland Terrapins, their first ever national championship, the first ever in school history. It was not easy, though. This Indiana team did not go away easily. They tested the Terps, and the Terps passed this test. Let me take you back inside the Georgia Dome, show you a few of the highlights, the crucial part in this game in the second half. Okay, the Terps led by six at the half, but Indiana came back. Jared Jeffries would give Indiana the lead at 44-42. This shows you what Maryland is made of. They come right back. Next trip down to court, Juan Dixon hits the three. They take the lead right back. Dixon finishes the MVP with 18 points, the MVP of the tournament. Maryland then went on a 22-8 run to end the game. Drew Nicholas for the two, they pull away. 64-52 the final. Terps are national champions. You'll hear that phrase a lot tonight. And finally, we've waited for this. Verzhak, we have waited a long time for this. The fans have been celebrating every win since the MCI Center, since the first round. But now the fans and the players and the coach all can celebrate. Everybody can celebrate together, and a lot of those Maryland fans are still inside the arena. They haven't left yet. We caught up with some of them earlier. Believe me, Jess, the celebration is underway. They love their Terps. <laughs> they love the new national champs. Maryland basketball fans have been waiting decades for a chance to celebrate a national championship. There was no holding back after beating Indiana. season Gary Williams did a great job and the Maryland Terrapins came together as a team they're the one of the best they're the best teams ever play at Maryland right now any nervous moments tonight yeah the whole game <laughs> breathing a little easier now this uh, as sweet as you thought it might feel sweeter this is the best best feeling ever and many of those people with that good feeling that best feeling ever will be wearing these these are hot off Looks the good, press Dennis. that's the national championship t-shirt here is the national championship cap. Very nice. Very nice. These were not freebies. I paid for them. <laughs> 2002 national champs in their 2002nd game in, uh, in the history of the school. Guys, we're going to be back a little bit later with reaction. As soon as the Gary Williams and his guys hit the podium, we'll bring that to you. Winners go first in the NCAA tournament, so it ought to be real soon. For now, back to you. Very good. Okay, Thanks yes. very much. I think that guy said it all when he said we were nervous the whole game. A lot of people were nervous, Absolutely. but they pulled it out at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got Greg Stardard on Route 1. I understand you guys, there were some problems. You were here Saturday night. Problems Saturday night, problems last year. Mm -hmm. Remember when they played Duke. Uh, Greg, what's the situation out there tonight? Well, we're having some problems. 
problems again tonight. We have a lot of people here who have gathered on Route 1, not far from Knox Road there, and you can see that there are thousands of students who have spilled out into the street here. The police are here trying to keep the situation calm, but it's really not working. We are seeing and hearing a lot of bottles flying towards the police officers. Uh, also, that pepper powder has been sprayed a couple of times. Uh, they, they, they're trying to do the best job they can right now, but again, we don't want to say that the situation is under control at this point because it is not. Uh, we are joined now by Dave Statter, and, and Dave, you were looking at this, this police operation. What were they hoping to achieve here tonight? At halftime, they set up a metal fence along here. Uh, public works people along by the direction of the Prince George's County Police Department and the police chief set up metal fencing hoping to contain the crowd. That didn't work. Take a look at the videotape that we shot about a few minutes after the Maryland victory. That fencing came down and became a weapon. Crowds moved in, pushed down the fencing, started pulling it back. A number of people got trampled, including our photographer at the time. Pulled back, started using that metal fencing and pushing it toward police officers. We've seen that here a couple of times that the metal fencing was used as a weapon against the police. All the metal fencing has come down. The hope of the police department, Prince George's County Police, was to keep people on the sidewalk and move them toward Fraternity Row. That has not happened. In fact, Prince George's County Police have had to retreat. They were up at Knox Road. They've moved down south of Knox Road now. They continue to use the pepper pellets that they're shooting multiple times at people who they see are causing problems. In fact, we're getting a good excuse me, whiff, of it, whiff of it right now of the pepper uh, powder coming through here. Uh, the crowd is far from under control and not contained, really. Police, hey. police had hoped this would be a different situation. They have about more 500 officers or more. They're using them as backups. You can see them further down Route 1. Uh, they're not moving aggressively. In fact, you can see a little confrontation going on right now. Police are targeting individuals who are being uh, destructive doing vandalism or attacking police with the bottles, as you saw. And that's a situation that you're looking at live right now, the police officers trying to deal with this uh, one Maryland fan. You, it appears right now that he's taunting the police officers, and now you can see that one of his friends trying to pull him away, and there's something else that's been thrown at, at the police officers here on the scene. Again, a number of bottles have been crashing all around us. Uh, Anytime you have a situation like this, you're going to have a few people so right who here, are trying to barricade. cause problems. And look at this metal barricade right over here. Uh, that was just thrown towards the police officers just seconds ago. And the pop, pop, pop you may hear, the pop, pop, pop you may hear is the pepper pellets that are being shot into the crowd. Not having a great deal of effect, people are able to stand, stand around. All okay, right, gentlemen. We're send it back to Broadcast House. Thanks okay. so much. Thanks we a lot. may get back to you a little bit later on. The Maryland players and, and the coach have now the taken the podium. Let's go to them. Game, the coach Williams. Four, to set a goal that a lot of people kind of laughed at because they weren't afraid to tell people what their goal was and to get back here and get the chance and to win it all tonight was just a great feeling because we had to come through some great teams to get here. Some teams that have won national championships have great experience. Uh, their fans know what it's all about because they've won championships. So uh, it was a great thrill for us because of the competition involved. I thought Indiana was a terrific basketball team. Uh, their defense makes it very tough for you to run your offense. And, you know, it took us a good 25 minutes before we really uh, ran our offense like we can. And I was really proud of the players because they hung in there. It wasn't easy to, you know, get, it was very frustrating because we weren't able to score like we thought we should. And, you know, we kind of got stuck there in the first half for a while. But these guys have done that all year. They've never wavered in terms of their confidence in what they do, and they knew they could get it back if they just kept working. And while all that was going on on the uh, on our offensive end of the court, we were still playing great defense, and that's carried us all year. And it's it's very rewarding for me as a coach to see a team play defense like that for 40 minutes. Okay, we'll take the first series of questions for uh, the players. So uh, indicate right here in the middle. We'll start. Wisconsin. Uh, Juan, when they went ahead 44-42 uh, and you hit the three to put them back, can you tell me what kind of look you got, what you saw on the court then, and Steve, what the team was feeling then? <clears throat> Steve Blake made a great play. Uh, we, he, were able, he was able to break a trap, and uh, my man helped, and he made a great pass, and I made a tough shot, and uh, we were able to get the lead back. There in the left. Juan. They scored only eight points, I believe, in the last seven minutes of the game. What was the key to your uh, defense down the stretch? Well, basically, we just try to defend the three-point line. I think uh, they, they hit some threes in the first half, but uh, coach kept us together. We went out there, played tough defense, and uh, 
our job was to defend the three and just help on the low post on Jeffries. And uh, uh, we played great team defense today, and uh, that's a credit to, the, to this team, man. We worked extremely hard this whole year, and we were very consistent, and uh, look where we are today. Another one on the left. Juan, congratulations. Can I ask you, uh, with everything that has gone through this year, and really your whole life in a sense, this moment for you, what does it mean, your thoughts, what's going through your heart and mind right now? It means a lot. You know, uh, I grew up a lot in college. Uh, I've grown so much, and I developed as a person, as a basketball player, and it's a great feeling. I, mean, I feel like I'm dreaming right now, because I'm part of a national championship team. And a lot of people back, back home counted me out and didn't give me a chance. And, I went out here and I got better each year and, and led my team to a national championship. So it's a great feeling, man. And I'm speechless. You know? I really don't know what to say, but <laughs> I don't care. I'm going to talk forever. <laughs> Way in the back on the left. Lonnie, is this win particularly satisfying because of the – it stands in such comparison to the frustrating way last year ended for you? Yeah, of course. I talked about that yesterday. You know, people asked me, was the Duke game out of my mind? And I was like, no, it won't be until we win a national championship. <laughs> and now it is, because that's what we did tonight. Got one down here in front, please. Front row. Byron, can you talk about that big save you made on the baseline that led to a Drew Nicholas bucket to put you guys up 55-49? What do you remember about that play? That was a huge play in the ballgame. Oh, well, I just wanted to come in and make a difference. Uh, you know, assistant coach came on the bench and said, we're going to need you in the end, and uh, we just need your energy. And I just wanted to come off the bench and just give a spark and have, give our team a chance to win. And I guess it's hustling what it takes to, to win, and that's what I'm going to do. On the left. I wonder if you guys could, um, what you guys might say to young players uh, who are thinking of leaving early uh, to go to the NBA. Are, are, are they missing something? I mean, is there, is there something in the pursuit of the, ju the journey um, to your senior year and maybe what this feels like? Juan, why don't you take that and then we'll come down the line. Well, really, I, I don't know what to say about that. Um, I, I had a lot of fun in college. You know, I developed as a basketball player each year. And um, really, I mean, college is a lot of fun to me. It's a good experience and I, got, I learned a lot. So, you know, a lot of guys are talented and they're able to come out early. So. I mean, it's up to them. Lonnie? Um, everybody has di different situations, you know, different things they have to face. But, you know, me, I don't regret, you know, ever, ever you know, leaving college or anything. I mean, it was the, the best four years of my life. And, you know, we just finished it off tonight, you know, the way it should be done. Well, been yeah. listening to the seniors, what a sweet night for them. Juan Dixon, Lonnie Baxter, Byron Mouton, yep. three seniors. You won't see that often. Three That's seniors right. on That's the That's right. And, you know, Juan Dixon said all year that he wanted to be a leader for this team, and he, and he showed it tonight with the 18 points and most valuable player for the tournament. Right. Um, incredible. Great night for, for uh, Maryland, for College Park. Unfortunately, they're having some problems on Route 1 still. Yeah, we've got a live shot here where uh, we're told there's a fire in the middle of uh, Route 1, and the police are trying to put it out. Uh, from these shots, uh, you can see what we see. Uh, right. People mingling. You can see mostly smoke here, so apparently the flames are out. And you heard from Dave Statter, of course, earlier, and Greg Starter, who said that police had been trying to keep things under control. But keep in mind that Saturday, students, many students still weren't back from college uh, from spring break, and they're all back tonight. So for many, many more students there tonight than you had over the weekend. Right. Jennifer Ryan is standing by live at Fraternity Row. Let's go to her right now. Plenty of people out here and a bonfire right behind me. If you take a look, you can definitely see the flames. I just talked to some people who were down there. They said tree limbs are going into that fire, furniture is going into the fire. There is an armored vehicle standing by, but so far we're being told that the police are not doing anything. However, all night they have been gathering, they've been planning, and they say they are ready for tonight. You're back now live on Frat Row. We've got a lot of students who have gathered today. Um, they're here coming from Route 1, many of them. Literally, when this game was won, the doors were thrown open of the dormitories and the frat houses and the people gathered here in this courtyard. So far, it seems that it has been peaceful for most of the evening. But we have seen uh, at least one person come through here with an injury, a young man who uh, had a bottle thrown at him and uh, hit his 
somewhere above his eye. He was being walked out of here by some of his friends. Again, there is a fire behind this huge crowd, but down there, it seems like everything is under control. There have been no major injuries, and as far as we know, no arrests in this area. But again, police are standing by, and uh, as you can see, the crowd has been really quite. The, the crowd has been quite festive. I've been very And loud. Okay. You take care of yourself. Our Jennifer, Jennifer, Jennifer Ryan was just a few good friends up there. <laughs> you know, we should point out that for the most part, it looks like things are under control. It might be just a few folks that are causing some problems for police. Right. Uh, Phil, that was Route 1 and, and, of course, Fraternity Row. And Phyllis Armstrong's been at Cole Field House. Phyllis? Hey, I'm here. I don't know if you can see it or if you can hear the horns hawking, but the party is on. Let's go right to the table where we can show you the Terrapin fans pouring out of Cole Field House. They're thrilled by the victory, chanting, we're number one, holding up signs, one, number one, at last. <laughs> but inside Cole Field House all night, there may have been some tense moments, but no doubt. What game is this? Yes. All year, all year for this. With every point scored, every rebound nabbed by the Terrapins at the Georgia Dome, cheers and high fives erupt at Cole Fieldhouse. They're doing good. They're doing really good. I'm glad that they're um, actually ahead. Doing very well. We're playing good defense. This is what they need to do to win. Yeah, yeah Juan Dix is making the shots and just playing hard G. That's what I like seeing. With the University of Maryland staying in the lead through the first half, Turk fans hold on to their confidence. Indiana has got more of an individual game, but Maryland, you have the whole team thing going. Like my coach would say, together everyone achieves more. Do you plan or hope to attend University of Maryland next year? Yes. How do you think they're doing? I think they're playing a good game. I mean, they went six minutes without a basket. They really need to move the ball down low. If they and finally, the championship victory Terrapins have waited for more than quarter of a century. Yes, we did it! We got it all the way! We got the one! Ah! That's amazing. Best thing ever. Best thing since I've been here. It's great. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Why does it mean so much? We have a school here, and it's, we've gone through a lot here, a whole lot. I mean, since Lynn Bias, it hadn't been the same, and this is just fantastic. Great right ending at Cole Field House. Well, the celebration here outside Cole Field House is peaceful and has been since the game ended. Now, if the Terrapins are going to repeat, that game will be played, or at least it'll be shown at the Comcast Center, the new Comcast Center, next year. Back to you at Broadcast House. Phyllis is talking about a repeat already. <laughs> it's just basking this one yeah. victory tonight, Phyllis. Good Next enough. Up. Greg Stoddard standing by live on Route 1. Greg, where are you at? Still on Route 1 here, and we have a fire, too, right here at Route 1. You can see the uh, flashing lights right behind me there. It appears that the firefighters are at least trying to make their way inside to try to do something with the flames here. Dave Statter joins us. And, Dave, this is something that, obviously, uh, firefighters did not want to see. Okay, we now go to Mr. Meese. Yeah, there was basketball. Right? There was. <laughs> your, your reaction, first off, to this game. I mean, it's a, it a tough, hard-fought game. It was a very tough game. They, they just were unsettled for 25, 30 minutes of this. But there was a neat factoid on the CBS telecast that with Wisconsin, Kentucky, Connecticut, Kansas, and Indiana, this is the first time that a team has had to beat five former national champions to win the title. Hey, hey, Makes it more interesting. Yeah. Watching this national championship game unfold, though, it was obvious Indiana could not win the game, but Maryland could lose it. It just didn't go that easily. Juan Dixon, though, won the tournament scoring title and the MVP accolades. He scored 18 points off the skip pass from Byron Muthan. He hit it, and that made it 9-5, to five, got the Terps started. It really did look easy, a 19-8 to eight lead. And then when Ryan Randall off the bench got the little jump shot in the lane, again they had the 11-point lead at 29-18. But Indiana is nothing if not disciplined. They worked for the last shot of the half and got Tom Coverdale's leaner to end that half at 31-26 at the break. And then Indiana had its only lead on this play. Jared Jeffries, the layup, made it 44-42. But the Hoosiers' lead lasted only 13 seconds. 
Juan Dixon came down and hit a three. And the final, the Terps pulled away with foul shots and plays like this. Taj Holden handoff to Drew Nicholas. A little breathing room at 55-49 with three and a half left. 64-52 the final. Maryland with a national championship. And Jess Atkinson in Atlanta, this was a lot harder than it had to be. Huh? Ken, I think you put your finger on it. Uh, this Maryland Terrapin team won because of their talent. But they would not have won if it were not for the poise they exhibited when that game got close with 9.53 to go. They went on a 22-8 run. They are the national champs. You don't take my word for it. Take Gary Williams' word. I was really proud of the players because they hung in there. It wasn't easy to, you know, get. it was very frustrating because we weren't able to score like we thought we should. And, you know, we kind of got stuck there in the first half for a while. But... These guys have done that all year. They've never wavered in terms of their confidence and what they do, and they knew they could get it back if they just kept working. And while all that was going on on, the, uh, on our offensive end of the court, we were still playing great defense, and that's carried us all year. And it's, it's very rewarding for me as a coach to see a team play defense like that for 40 minutes. Indeed that was, and defense wins championships in football, won it for Gary Williams tonight. Ken, when I see you in just a little bit, uh, we're going to talk to Adrian Branch and Ronnie Thompson, start uh, getting a little bit more in depth into this game and how and why the Terps won. For now, back to you. Okay, thank you, Jay.